Yeah, I'm just gonna here. I just pressed record, so it'll be easier just to go into. You it. pressed record? Oh my god, fucking shocking! Oh, I already swore. We're already getting a ban. That's not good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, so, like 19 viewers we might get between now and what is the draft? 8 p.m. 8:30. 8, 8 p.m. I I think we'll get about. Six. What about you? <laughs> well, if we refresh a few times, we might get. More. So. Oh, there we go. That's, 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 that's how you do it, right? You got to so, count your own. I have my own laptop and my work laptop, and so do you. So there we go. I got a cell phone and an Xbox. Oh, see, I didn't even think about the Xbox. You're a genius already. See? We're yeah, we're already talking about 10 views. Same IP address, but still. <laughs> I, have, so. I have two different ones, luckily. So. Oh, fuck, Mr. Fancy Guy over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. And four hours and 43 minutes away is what my thing says here. I don't think that's oh, accurate. Oh, there's a countdown. Nice. You have it. Yeah, I got a countdown on this website. Nice. NBA draft on it. Nice. Um, but so where do you want to start here? That's... Well, obvious way to start. Or wait, are we going upwards or are we going downwards here? I would think upwards, right? Yeah. It's the same way. Yeah. I think, so. <laughs> See random guy in the background. Is that your dog? Yeah, and we got the dog, and we got we got the roommate there. Three roommate, so double combo. <laughs> there you go. Oh, um, Who, who's so, going first here? The Minnesota. Are you thinking they keep the pick or trade it? Well, it's tough. The top top two picks are probably going to be Wiseman and Ball, and. Why would they pick up Wiseman? He's the same position as Towns. It would make sense if he was a small center, but he's not. So I mean, you can't you can play him at four, but why would you? Same thing exactly. Like, why would you play Towns at the four? Or either either or. Like this guy's Wiseman's what seven one. Yeah. Like it's he's not could probably not gonna be that quick. Towns already has. I don't know how great he is on defense, but put. Who's def- who's gonna defend defend against Davis? Yeah, I mean, he's still a, like size still counts for something, right? As long as you're there at the end of the day, as long as he he can learn how to box out, he'll size out eventually. So I don't think that's a huge concern. So uh, even then, too, like I just like there is situations where you take the best person available, and I just don't think this is one of them. Even if they have, even if they have worked out him and Ball, and they think he's way better, I just still don't think you can justify it, like you said. But where do you go with it then? Originally, I, like, the thing is, I would say trade it. But at the same time, they don't have a primary ball hand. Like, I don't, like, Russell's not a point guard at the end of the day. He is, but he's not. It's like the Drew Holiday we talked about the other day, right? Like, he's more of an off ball, get open, shoot, might get five, six assists a game, but he's not a floor general by any means. So, could you take ball and it be justified? Maybe. But, like, at the same time, do guys like Towns and that want that presence around i'm not too sure so i almost think you try to trade that pick to like seven maybe eight and to like a new york kind of thing and you hope that you can get an isaac okoro pretty late because they do need a score and they do have josh Jacoby. and i mean but he hasn't like i don't think he'll be fully what they want and they're not fully in on jared culver so i think I'd like a guy like okoro if he develops into that superstar kind of thing because I don't think Edwards is going to – like, Edwards and Russell just aren't going to fit together. So I say hey, trade that pick down to seven or eight kind of thing and hope you have a Coro available still and just go with that. That's that's my thing on that. And then with that being said, if they trade to New York, I think New York takes the ball one overall. Yeah, I think New York would take the ball. Um, he, he, they, they want the presence, right? For sure. Um, and but then yeah, we'll talk about Westbrook too. And why why do you take Westbrook when you have Dennis Smith Jr. already? I'm not off the top of my head. He could be a free agent. I could be wrong, but it's just like why do you get a guy who's like a almost younger, maybe worse Westbrook, and you just take him with the older version of the worst Westbrook anyway? So that makes no sense. Smith Jr. is still there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. I'd, well, I don't know. Westbrook is interesting. It's. Uh, what he does is going to – or what they can get for him, I don't know. No, but, apparently. That's what I no. mean. If, like, at least Houston, they have the 16th pick, so maybe they could still go 16 to 8 and flip with New York. It's not ridiculous. 
But like I said, like if I'm New York, I'd much rather the ball at this point than Westbrook, honestly. He'll he'll bring the attention, and that's what New York New York wants. And he's a ball handler, and they need one. Like, but balls looked great in the film I've seen of him. Looked fantastic. He had, wasn't even playing college. Yeah. Um, I already. What is he technically playing pro overseas? It's yeah. I mean, technically, yeah, but it's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, let's. These guys aren't NBA players. Obviously. <laughs> uh, it's he put up crazy numbers on a team that was built around him. Yeah. He did great. Sure, he can shoot the ball. Fantastic. Um, I think if he if New York trades for number one, obviously he's going number one. Yeah. Uh, but sure. in a regular draft where we have a clear top three, I don't think he's even in the top three. For, no, for sure. Especially after seeing what his brother ended up doing. Like, they're just so comparable. So it's, His brother's great on defense. And he has potential still, but that shooting is still so spotty. And was, he's already been traded. To, like, he's already been traded. It's been three years. I mean, so clearly a team already gave up on him, you know? And you know how much attention the Ball family brings. Yeah, that alone. Too. Like, <laughs> it's in a market where you don't have a star but like again if Minnesota's number picking number one why I, I don't know if he, he would get along with Towns and the defense between Russell and Ball would just be fucking horrendous <laughs> they get fucking lit up yeah, like, it doesn't improve them much offensively like it, yes and no like yeah well, it will he'll, be, he'll get 20 points next year Maybe, but like, and yeah, moves the ball a bit, but I, it's not what they need. Like, they really need a three kind of guy. They need a guy who's just going to hit that corner, like, mid range over and over. They need a reliable score kind of thing. Guy. If they do keep the pick, yeah. Who do they go with, though? That's what, if, if I keep the pick and I'm them, I'd still take ball because, like I said, they don't have that primary ball handler, and I don't think Edwards and Russell is a good match. Neither is Weissman and Towns. So if I keep the pick, I like you're kind of forced. I feel to take ball, but if I'm them, I should get trade up for, or try to trade down for sure. Like, I don't. I can see them picking Edwards in a small world, if, but I'd, I'd if they're doing that, they might as well trade down. Yeah, you say yeah. If if, if you could but, anything, but I mean, like, what I think he fit down? the best out of those three guys. Uh, but. That's that's saying that Russell would be the point guard. Yeah. I just can't see unless you have a strong defensive point guard. I can't see Russell defending the strong shooting guards in the league. And like, even, and like we like you said too earlier, like we didn't see Anthony Edwards in March. We don't know for sure. Like he only had 19 points. It's like I'm not saying that it only goes by points per game in college, but it's not like he was the top scorer in the nation either. We don't know for sure that he's going to be just lights up scoring the NBA. They've had so many busts already around that one and two position. It's like <laughs> why even keep trying almost if you're Minnesota? Why do you think uh, Wiggins was a bust, eh? <laughs> <laughs> He's not the worst bust we've seen, but he's definitely uh, he's not definitely, not the number one we thought he'd be, and that's yeah, coming from people who watch him in college. Yeah, for sure, and are Canadian. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. That's, I guess that's something to be said. <laughs> but yeah, so it's but it's tough though. If they do trade down, are they just going to trade for future draft picks and try to build this as a team, or are they going to trade down and try to bring in who would they bring in? Like I said, if, if I'm them, I try to trade down to like eight, you probably take that first. You maybe take another, like maybe a second, or if New York or someone has another late first round pick, you take that too. Or you just take someone who would just help your team just to kind of fill a position you don't have to fill in free agency. Because like they don't seem very high on any of these picks either, right? Like the sense seems to be that they just want to trade it. And if trading to seven or eight, they still seem to be getting a pretty solid player, honestly. Well, I- so. At number seven, they got Detroit there. Derrick Rose would come to mind in that sense. Yeah, but he has he did go there, but, I mean, does he really want to go back? I think he just signed an extension with Detroit too, no? Um, I, don't, I, didn't think, I don't think so. I have to search that up. But, uh, no, I, I, I don't think Derrick Rose is going to end the year in Detroit. I think that team's getting blown up. Yeah, I agree. I was thinking um, – 
easier too. Like if you're a team like Detroit, even like I was saying, do you trade up, you get rid of Blake, you just get rid of it all? Maybe. Like I know that LA has been talking about Rose. I don't know what LA can even offer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, somehow it doesn't matter. When there's talks about it, they get it. <laughs> that just seems to be the LeBron James world. Yeah. Oh, that's, but yeah, so it's uh, going to so, be it's gonna bet. I think Minnesota's going to do something tonight. You think, you don't think they keep it either? Oh, I, I just don't see how any of those players make that team into a playoff contender next year. So overall census, if you're the GM before moving on, what's, what do you do with it? For me, it's try to move down seven or eight. Like I said, get another late round pick, maybe another asset just to fill the team, try to take Isaac or Coral. That's what I go with. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I can even see them trading down even deeper. I, I don't know if a number seven pick to a number 10 pick in this draft is that with the, how many variables there is, number 10, 12, like uh, someone getting down there into that range, even Boston, that's for Boston's at 14. I can see, I can see that happening. Um, Austin but, talked about moving into the top three. Yeah. That's where they, would they want to prefer number three or number one? I can see Charlotte keeping that pick unless they're getting someone like Westbrook, which supposedly there's rumors about, um, don't know if that's ever going to happen. I, but that something I can see happening would be them moving down to that 10 to 15 range. Cause there's not much of a, as much as there is some top five players in this draft, top 10 players, the top 15 players, there's not much of a difference. They do, most, most years. they do have the 16th as well too. Yeah. They, so they're, again, they, they can use more, role players in the next couple of years and build around Russell and Towns. I, as much as ball could be an asset, they can, this trading down could get them a vet veteran asset to get them in the playoffs next year and still have those role, be able to trade for those role players or get, be able to draft those role players in the 10, 15. That's what I think is going to happen. Do you, if you're them even like at this point, do you even just forget it? You even just trade for a pick next year and just maybe, get a better player and you just take a first and you take a gamble and hope maybe you get a top 10 pick next year too. And you take on one of those veteran guys you're talking about. Well, does, how many picks does Golden State have? Well, they have the number two right now, eh? Yeah. So I mean, yeah, they're, so they're not going to need that. It would be uh, like a team around that middle mark, like a Utah or a Memphis, yeah. or someone like that kind of thing who, I mean, like Memphis almost like because they just over succeeded so much. If they like, if they could somehow land another top pick, I don't. Yeah. Uh, Memphis or even even OKC for that matter. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they have a, they have like what is it? I think they have sixteen picks over the next three drafts. Or something. Sixteen picks over the next six years with four pick swaps, I believe. Yeah. So I mean, if anyone has assets to move up a bunch, it's for sure them. Like, I can see them moving up quite a bit in the next couple of years. They do like but, Shea. They like him a lot, obviously. They're trading everything except him. And I mean, they did just crazy. trade their ball handler, so it's not unrealistic to think they trade. They move up. They take ball one overall, too. But, but it's going to be definitely interesting. I think that's, yeah, that, that's not out of the realm, realm of possibility. It's, I, I don't think Minnesota is going home with that number one pick. No, me neither. Like I said, I'm still firm that I think New York's just going to go all in. If they trade it, I think it'll be about eight. If I had that second option, like I said, I would even just try trading for next year to OKC. I think that's solid, but I'm, I'm with you. I don't think they keep that pick. They just don't. They can, they can use a vet or someone picked up from a different team instead, and they can use the future picks. And yeah. who, who overall likely is going to go first? Between Wiseman and Ball, uh, I, I can I can see Ball. Yeah, I think the same. I think whoever trades up is more likely to take him. Which Even, is fucking sad. Yeah, I agree. Even if it's Boston, like same thing. They they do have Kem, Kemba, but almost like they seem to like having just that extreme depth of the point guard position. I don't think it's unrealistic either, but. If it is Boston, even then Anthony Edwards might make more sense too, but they have so much scoring already. I don't know. That's, that's a hard one. But yeah, 
I agree. Yeah. My census one would be Colin for sure. Yeah. Um, well, if it's Boston, I'm probably picking Wiseman. That's the position they need. For sure. Well, moving on to two then. Yep. So, well, if you're the state, are you keeping that as pick? If I have, if they have anything to say about it, no. I think that they would trade for another star with that pick. But we're not in a regular year. That number two isn't as good as it normally is. It could be. Wiseman could be great, and he's a great player. But we, he only played three games this year. We really don't know. Are they going to want to go with the unknown? Or do they package it with Wiggins and get someone? But who's – I don't know. We're Canadians. I don't think they're actually going to get anyone better than Wiggins for that team. I think he actually is a good fit on that team. And I personally think that they sh- should keep that pick and, and keep it with, probably with Wiseman. He'd be a good fit. They're missing a center. Um, even if he's a rookie and they can sign a backup, another center this off season, he does not going to need that much pressure on him in the first year. But I just, I think that they only have a couple more years with Curry and they have to go for it. So I think they could think they're going to have to go for it. So they're going to trade it with Wiggins for somebody. But I actually think that's, unless they get a top three or top five player or a top 10 player, let's say it's, probably going to be a mistake overall in the next five years yeah i think it's pretty short discussion then because i honestly think they're keeping the pick too is like as many people think they want to trade it like yeah sure they could go and get another superstar and they're always after the next guy we always know how they are like that but at the same time i mean that's always been the one position that seems to be lacking even when they had everyone their center was zaka i mean it's the one position they've always been missing, right? And it was always, they need a center. They need a center. And it feels like at this point, at least with there, you fill that void. And because they do have so many other pieces, you can almost risk it where if he is a bust, I mean, you still have arguably two, maybe three of the top 25, 50 players in the NBA kind of thing. So they're not lacking in talent or anything. So it's not gonna. It's not a huge gamble for them. You put Green in the top uh, fifty players in the NBA. It it really depends on the version of him you're getting. At some point, definitely he was. Now, yep, yep. definitely questionable. But I mean, even then, it could have been Wiggins that's the third one in there, depending how he's playing on any night. You never know. But I just yeah, overall, it's not a huge risk for them. They're not in a position like these other teams where if they fuck up on this on the second overall pick, it's gonna cost them their franchise. So I say go for it, just take wise. And you needed a center forever. You feel the boy, like you said, bring in someone else, help him out a bit. First year, nine and seven, nine and nine, anywhere along those lines. It's a win. Exactly. But I think that's the best play. I but if they if a trade opens up where they get a top thirty player for Wiggins, a vet, um, I don't I'd have to go through and see who's who'd be available this year. I think they might make the mistake and trade it. The only thing that would really make sense would be getting like a Gordon Hayward for the pick because Boston didn't want And like you said, at least they need the center. If we feel ball is going one overall, maybe they're confident they could get Wiseman then, but that too, they fill their center void as well. Boston, like I said, they get rid of Hayward because they know they have so much talent around that kind of one, two, three position. And then- when you're matching salaries, I – is Hayward an upgrade over Wiggins? I mean... I don't think so. If you get a healthy version, probably, just based on, like, IQ and based on... Hey, on based on what Hayward won't do, almost. Wiggins is definitely more likely to show up right here. Well, at this point, yes. Um, Wiggins is also, what, 24 years old? 25? Which is often forgotten, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hayward is 30, 31. And he's ex- his contract expires after next year. So I, I, as much as there's talk about him getting traded, I don't think he's going to go anywhere. Probably not. But if I'm them, that's probably the only trade I feel like is going to be available for that pick, honestly. Yeah, I can, I can see that. I can see it. Um, but I, I just don't think it, Hayward's that much of an upgrade. I love, I like the way he plays. He was an all-star in Utah. He hasn't played like an all-star in Boston yet. 
<laughs> well, he only played like an above average player. He only had one leg. For Great months. role player. Let's not blame him too much. <laughs> Star? Yeah. Wig- Wiggins, 20 points per game, too. Yeah, it's different 20, though. Like, everyone just. They I just... don't see your head moving. <laughs> <laughs> it's an but... internet connection's unstable for one of us, so. <laughs> That's probably me. Uh, I live in the country. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, no, uh, I Wiggins is gonna do really good in Golden State if they give him the chance that he deserves. It's it's not unlikely. Like I was thinking that today too. Like he's no worse than Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes wasn't bad in Golden State. He was what they needed at the time. He's not Kevin Durant, but he's not he's not a dog. Harrison Barnes is a little, probably a little bit better on defense right now, but. Yeah. That's because Wiggins, Wiggins played in, what, how many different systems in Minnesota? Yeah, and I mean... Um, they've been jumping ship every couple of years. He hasn't really had the chance to learn from these vets that are sitting there. they got a good system in place in Golden State. All he's going to fit right in. Minnesota, too. Here, at least, he could get a break from it a bit. So. He's not, not the star anymore. And people seem to forget that before Kevin Durant... Well, while Kevin Durant was there, too, but... They were when they have all their players, they're not isolation team. They pass the ball, they get that ball around. There's gonna be so many fucking open shots. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, that he's gonna have wide open that he never had before. So I I can see him going 20 points per game, the most efficient year of his career, and he's probably gonna learn how to play defense. And I and mean, the next thing you know, is that. And how many stars does he have to guard too, right? Like Clay stepped up on defense ever since, like since that first title run too. He's an elite defender now, so it's not like he's gonna have to every night to guard the top score or anything. So I think he'll be- no. And Clay's coming back. He's hungry. He hasn't played since that game in Toronto where he fucking. Not sure if you not sure if you remember watching it, but whenever he t- tore at- his ACL, k- k- ran back out. He's like, "Fuck you guys! Who gonna play anyways?" We went to and the- then the doctors were like, no, man, like you tore your fucking ACL. <laughs> yeah, fucking, yeah. That, that whole series was a uh, uh, series or something. But so you're pretty, you agree probably too wise when they keep it. Yeah, I I think they should. Yeah, I agree. All right. I think, so, I think they should. So if you're Charlotte then and you have the list of everyone else available, is it just you take Anthony Edwards and you, or that's it? Or uh, how much does Houston want for Westbrook? I mean, that's the like I said, they do have the 16th pick, Houston, which it's like again, or they have they have somewhere in the top. I think 16th, 16th, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think Minnesota had something. I said 16 again, but I think they have something. They, they have 17. Yeah, so Minnesota also does that mid range pick, but uh, yeah, I mean. If you still get the 16th pick, it's not awful. You're Charlotte. I mean, you've drafted high so often. You clearly aren't that good at it other than Kemba. So <laughs> it's really worth it now. It's hard. But in that situation, why the fuck is Houston trading the 16th pick? I, I mean, you know what I mean? I think that if they, if they go for the second, if they go for the third, um, or if they go for the third, but – well, considering how much they gave up for Westbrook uh, to get him on their on their team, do you really think that Batum, some kind of other salary filler, and a pick swap is enough to get him? At this point, no one else wants him, so you take it. They, the only team's interested, I think they said, was Charlotte, New York. So I mean, what if you're, what if you trade a Harden away? I mean. You could, but... And then Westbrook's your star. You're still a playoff team. Maybe, but he's also on the decline. I mean, yeah. at least... Mr. Triple-Double. Yeah, but again, on the decline, and every year he's playing less and less games, at least Harvey, you know for sure you still have at least one, three years left, minimum. Yeah. Minimum. Yeah, so if they do do that pick swap, I can I can see Charlotte having to give up maybe 2022 first. Um, and then someone actually of value on their team, not just Batum. <laughs> uh, love, Batum's a great player, but is, if they're trading Harden and Westbrook, uh, or even if they're just trading Westbrook, Batum it will not be the difference maker that's going to win them a playoff series. So I don't think he's $27 million worth of it. 
but uh, good on him for getting a couple years of Portland into a $120 million contract. <laughs> Charlotte's, it's a hard one though. I mean, because if you're done, they have so much depth that like, depth not necessarily is in a bunch of good players, but it in guys I feel like they think are good. Like they have Devontae Graham at the guard, maybe three position. They have Terry Rozier who, again, guard maybe one position. You have Malik Monk you just drafted. Like Malik Monk's pretty solid. Yeah, so I mean, Anthony Edwards, where do you even have room for him? If you take Anthony Edwards, do you have to trade him? If they have the situation where Anthony Edwards isn't the guy available and it's a wise man. And then same thing, you have Herman Gonez, who they've been pretty high on too. And Grooming for a couple of years. Yeah, and you still have Biombo too, who pretty much well, player is wise. Yeah, but I mean, he's the same player as Wiseman, so you have to get rid of him. It's just another thing you have to do. Is no, well, if, if anything, he, they would keep him and just pay him because they know they're not winning this year. Yeah. And then then is going to be out after the year because if, if you trade him, he's not worth his money. Yeah. Uh, unless it's to a team that I'm pretty sure is contract over this year. So yeah. unless to a team that wants to unload for yeah. the Giannis hunt, but which no, is it's... over already too, though. Wouldn't well, <laughs> he hasn't signed. He hasn't not, signed. Not yet, but I mean, they've they've done what was asked. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, for this year, if they fail, though, he's that's... still not. He's not signing in December. No, that's that's another topic, but uh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. It's it's a different day, different day. Um, but uh, no, I I just with with Charlotte, no matter who is at the three, if it's Wiseman, who knows? Some people are high in that Obi Tippin um, or Toppin. I mean, uh, but if they draft either one of those players, they unless they unless Ball falls to the three, where he can be that star player, I don't think they have a star player on their team. No. And that's where it comes into trouble. As much as you can get as many B-rate players, and maybe if your Boston, a team like Boston got lucky and a couple of them became star players, but they still needed their Hayward and Walker. So, like, I just don't think they have that star player. I think they go out and trade for that star player. And I, can, I do see Westbrook going to that team just so that they can become a playoff team. For so the first time in. So you're high that this pick is traded to Houston for Westbrook, and you think they get a lot of assets in return for Westbrook? I think they get, if they do a pick swap this year, I think they're getting at least one more first round pick, um, and that they'd be giving up some kind of young player on their team. What if there's no pick swap? What if it's just they're like, hey, we know you guys are going to suck again. We're just going to take your next year pick too. If it's, do you think it's that, and then still Batum and a decent player? Well, if they trade this year's pick, they won't be able to trade next year's pick under the CPIN rule. That's what I mean. You think they just don't do this year's pick swap and they just trade next year's, like Charlotte instead? But if Westbrook's there, they're not going for, they're not tanking. They're not trying to tank, right? Yeah, but Houston could just believe maybe that they won't be that. I mean, uh, I guess I was saying Houston doesn't want to trade their pick this year. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I can. Yeah, I can see that. Um, because Houston probably will want to. I, I, I can still see them not trading any picks. I can just. I can just see them holding on, and getting the three, for Westbrook. Um, because if they do that, then they can literally just fill. Charlotte can just put salary filler. They don't need to put any of their young guys. And then Houston is on a rebuild. What does Houston do if it's Anthony Edwards? Any of Edwards and Harden? Do you just basically use Edwards like Eric Harden, essentially? Harden's a point guard. For the most part, ish. He, he played it for the most part before Paul arrived. Would they have Pat Bev back then? Uh, Pat Beverly's not exactly a point guard. He's a defensive player. <laughs> Um, so like I, I can definitely see Harden just running up the point, but you need to have, I, I would hope that Edwards is strong enough defensively to cover him up. I hear he's pretty good. I, yeah, I don't think defensively will be his issues. I think it'll just be how he develops as a score in the NBA. So we'll see. Like I said, it's hard 
because he's not necessarily like he doesn't fit in that three spot size wise. So he has to, I feel like, be that two. So you really need Harden to be the point guard. If you're trading up, you're getting rid of Westbrook, yeah. and you're taking him. I I think if unless it's ball, I think they trade that pick too. If he falls to three, they likely keep it. If they take Lamelo. If it's yeah. anyone else, I think they unload it, whether it be to Boston for Gordon Hayward package, just take on that salary again, or whether it's to Houston, like you said, for Westbrook. I think they trade it. I don't know for sure what they'll get, but I agree it will likely be a pick swap this year for like a mid-round pick and someone who's just going to be that higher salary, either kind of like that 15 to 30 top NBA player kind of thing. Yeah, that's 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 interesting. The Boston for Hayward, but two and Hayward get paid almost exactly. That's what, I mean. that's what it's hard for them. Um, I mean, if you're trying to tank again, and you just they're like, hey, so we'll take whatever we can. But ultimately, like like same thing. They don't seem high on any of these guys either, really. And unless no, they did get that primary point guard, I just don't see why they take anyone. Yeah, I can I can see that, and uh, it's. Uh, Charlotte's got to do something eventually, right? Yeah, for sure. It, can, it can't just be a bottom team every single year. Um, I think based the on the fact that they have Batum in Boston will take on Batum, your trade is more likely. But if there's an alternate scenario, I think it's likely that package. Yeah, because that's, that's, that's a doable package for Boston. Because um, Hayward uh, is – I think they'd have to trade Batum. Like, they – Houston. Boston would have to give up more. Yeah, for sure. The three is not worth Hayward. Yeah. No offense. Exactly. Because um, on that team with Brown and Tatum, is Hayward even starting? I don't know. If he Smart's been starting. Four, he is. I, I think that Tatum's a four at this point. Yeah, like that's what I mean. Part. They were doing Tatum at four, and they were doing Hayward at three I think, for, most, for a lot of it. Um, and that was whenever they didn't have Smart in the lineup. Yeah. And during the playoffs, they started putting Smart in the lineup even when even when Hayward was healthy. Um, we just don't know what kind of player Hayward's gonna come back as. But for sure, uh, package for sure. And he's not resigning Boston. Yeah. He's not resigning with Boston at the end of this year. They can't fucking afford him. No, that's what it, it'll be. Hayward, it, Boston has, I believe, it's somewhere I think the 14th to 18th yeah. in that range. 14th, be, yeah. Yeah, it'd be that pick. Maybe another pick in two years, or be another one of an actual decent player. Yeah, that's that's definitely a a, a workable scenario. Um, yeah, yeah, but I I still think that Houston's going to go for it just because Westbrook is Westbrook and Michael Jordan just seem to align. Um, Westbrook's part of the Jordan brand. He's I'd say the top player in the Jordan brand, but he's not because Doncic is. But um, he's he's right up there, and Westbrook doing good is great for him. Um, so I think he does bring him in. But that's if another team like New York doesn't trade for Westbrook, um, which could be a possibility as well. No, I'm still higher on your scenario. Like I said, I'm even higher on your scenario than Boston trading for that. Yeah. But if – just to kind of give something else, I think that's the counter. I, but I'm with you. I don't think they keep it unless ball falls. So yeah, that. <laughs> the rest Which of the – It's crazy we're, we're saying this because LaMelo Ball, he's, he's, he's Trey Young. He's like, not Trey Young. Trey Young's way better. <laughs> I know. I know. Like, Trey Young is what he would aspire to be. <laughs> and Trey Young's not even a top – like, he's not a top, a top player leading a playoff team. He's a top player leading the worst team in the league. <laughs> Trey Young is definitely like he's like almost like a not a poor man Steph Curry, but he's not a rich man Steph Curry. <laughs> so he, he, we don't know what he's going to become. Um, if you put him on a team where he's not the number one player, um, if he but you still let him shoot as much as he wants, Jamal Murray basically great. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But uh, isn't bad. No, it yeah. But, uh, no, it's – I don't know. LaMelo Ball is going to be a top pick this year. We sure. have to suck it up, and it's going to happen. Someone's going to take him, and he'll get 
if he goes to one of these shitty teams, he's going to get his 20, 22 points a game next year. He's probably going to win rookie of the year. So before we move on then to even the four and five, it's fair to say that he's not going to be your bust. <laughs> Uh, well, it's, it's, it's not tough. Thing about him. I think I feel like you're pretty high on him. I'm pretty high on his offense. Uh, and I think if he goes to one of these shitty teams, they're going to let him shoot as much as he fucking wants. <laughs> he's not going to be that good, though. Do his he, team's going to suck. Do you think he's going to be trigger shy, though, like his brother was? Because same thing. That's what everyone thought. He's just going to go to L.A. They're going to let him shoot for days. And he did. And when he did, he sucked. <laughs> um. I think that Ball didn't play in the environment where, as much as he did shoot a lot before he got to the NBA, lamello has been in an environment for the last couple of years where he's been allowed to shoot every fucking shot imaginable. Um, and if he goes to one of these shitty teams, I don't think there's anyone else to take the shots for him. I think he's going to kick, kick the ball up the court, go, go up to about 35 feet away, and if nobody's within two feet of him, he's going to shoot the fucking ball. It just, I was laughing myself because I just remember seeing some of that high school footage or the exact same thing that you just mentioned would happen. There's no, no reason to take these deep shots. And he's just pulling it up. And <laughs> That's, but if he goes to a winning team or a team where he's not the star player right away, I think he would actually probably fit in well. And he could be... He's manageable to be your like sec- third, second or third best player on the team, getting 20 points a game, and be playing good defense. So he's I think it's be good no matter what. I think, well, like that 20 points per game would be like in five, I think three years on a good team. Like if they're not, they're not gonna let him shoot. I see what you're saying. But it's that's that's, that's what he could develop into. Right, I see. Um, but defensively. Like, I would take Drew Holiday over him any fucking day of the week. Well, yeah, of the week. He's a 10-year, 11-year NBA veteran. So. I know. I, 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 <laughs> I get that. Um, but a just on a team like Charlotte, New York, a team like that where he's – they're not that – they don't have any, any other star to be in the limelight, I think he's going to go out there and he's going to get – he's going to shoot like crazy. He's not going to be that efficient. He'll be okay. He probably hit like 37% of his three-pointers. Um, but he's going to shoot six or seven a game, if not more. And he's not going to develop into the greatest player right away. Here's the thing. I feel like both of our overall senses was, though, that Minnesota is going to be forced to keep that pick and take him. And we both said he's not a good fit there. So how do you think that turns out overall? Though? Eventually they trade him. Or they just get rid of Russell, or you can't because they're friends, KT and Russell. Yeah, that's a difficult one. Um, if Paul just didn't go to the Suns, I'd say maybe you trade him to the Suns. Um, but Paul's there now, so yeah. that's over with. Because I was just saying that because of Booker's relationship with Towns and Russell. Right. Um, but considering what they just gave up for Russell, and they haven't really let and still have a year together, they're not going to stick with the fucking troublesome ball um, whose daddy's going to be on the sidelines every game pretending he's the coach. And over Russell, who is, hasn't even had a chance to go there yet, and I don't think that ball's going to be a better player than Russell in this league. He'll probably put up more points per game, but I don't think he's going to be that much better than Russell will be. So it'll just be a couple rough couple years. They'll get rid of yep. him. It'll be another awful pick for Minnesota, like always. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'm just picturing somebody blowing ball, blowing by ball. Russell standing there like this, and Towns <laughs> just going, "What's going on, guys?" Rebound, I, yeah, not boxing out or anything. <laughs> like, like, t- like someone like Westbrook's gonna light him up. Yeah, but like like we both said, there I feel like they're forced to take him. But uh, we'll get to these four and these five quick. I mean, like yep. both admittedly, we said after one, two, and three, it's kind of shaky because there was so little movement after February. I 
I already mentioned Okoro and Hyde. I don't think he's going four or five. I have also seen a lot of talk of four of mid or of Chicago taking the uh, small forward um, the European guy, the Denny uh, Denny Abida, I believe it is. Um, I've seen a lot of people oh. talking about him, but I mean, you have Laurie Markkinen. You just took him. I don't see why you do. So realistically, yeah. again, you have Kobe White. You don't take a point guard, so I don't think you take Halle, Halle Burton or anyone like that. Um, so, I mean, realistically, I think they just stay safe. They probably keep the pick, and they probably just take Toppin. Toppin? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Toppin had a good year last year. Um, he's a good, good player. They, I, there's, but there's not much of a difference, like you're saying. Yeah. There's, there's no one standing out. We don't really know that much about these guys. And that's what I mean. Even then, they have Wendell Carter. Like they, They're pretty yeah. – they don't necessarily need another big guy, but I just feel like he's the safe pick. I don't feel like anyone's desperate for the four. So I just feel like I've, that's how it's going to happen. I've heard a lot of talk about Onyeka, um, about him going pretty high. Um, read an art- a couple articles, an article today saying about how he will, he would, he might even top out in the top three. But again, like, like, Maybe, but like I said, the Bulls have Carter. Like you don't have Wendell Carter who they're so high on, and then take another. Second. And and Markinen, who is essentially Markinen, should essentially be playing center. Yeah, um, that's that's the hard part. It's no, it's I don't I don't that that one's tough to say as well. Um, or again, do they trade down? Maybe do they trade out of this draft? Maybe eventually they got to start this actually going to win some games. They got a couple of good players already. Like I said, I just they, don't think anyone's high on this pick on like, like it's just so anyone, good. any of them. I think someone would rather having a number seven Detroit pick, but you're not going to get much other than, so you're suggesting that they're like a team like Detroit might take a seven and a four this year and just Chicago just completely leave the strap kind of thing. Yeah. It's not, not unrealistic. Um, Chicago, if they do that trade, maybe they pick up like um, Derrick Rose or they, maybe they go big and they give another, another pick and they try to get Blake Griffin. Um, and by doing something like that, they're essentially saying, hey, we're, our, our future picks are going to be not worth anything because we're going to be a good team. I mean, if I'm them and I have the potential to have my starting five as Kobe White or Chris Dunn, um, and then also Kobe White, Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, Laurie Markin, and Blake Griffin, Wendell Carter. That's a pretty solid starting five. Yeah. So um, if I had the option of them then to get Blake Griffin, I would probably go for that. I just don't think it's going to be there. I think no one's going to want it. I think they'd be forced to take that four. They're going to be forced to take Toppin. But if that option was there, I would definitely take the Blake Griffin if that trade was there. I I think that Detroit is still so high on Griffin that they would require another pick, another first rounder for him. But like you um, said, Chicago would clearly be abandoning value in their picks if they're doing this. So I don't think they'd and, be against doing that. But but then who do you fill on the salary side? Exactly. In Chicago. That's exactly. that's the issue because they don't have any. Do they have any bad cr- contracts? I'm, I'm not sure, and even then, because like guys like Mark and all that, you're gonna have to sign them. You don't want to have that room where all your cap caps going to Griffin, where he's untradeable because he's just getting older and older and older. But he's only got about two or three more years. Still, yeah, still. So like, it's he will get older, and by the time he gets older, though, is whenever these other guys start getting paid. Yeah. It's... So that's that's the only thing I I think it's possible, because uh, I don't think that they're a team that will attract a star player next off season. So I don't think they're really worrying about carrying this extra salary. Meanwhile, Detroit's going to have a really tough time getting rid of Griffin because yeah. nobody wants to carry extra salary going into the next offseason where you got Leonard and Giannis and everyone else under the sun available. And, I mean, they are pretty desperate to finally get back there to Detroit. So, I mean, if they sit down, they have discussion ownership, they're like, hey, we're not going anywhere, Blake. Maybe we'll get a playoff spot, but – we don't need a first round. We were a former title team. We want back there. We're going to make a run at a guy like Kawhi. Won't happen, obviously. They won't get him. But, I mean, that's how management likes to think. So, it's not that's a, what New York thought last year, right? 
Exactly. That's what I mean. Hey, you got to be ambitious, but it, it, obviously no one will go there, but you could think like that. Mm, I forgot about Otto Porter. It'd be a great match. Yeah. Uh, salary wise. Yeah. If you need a salary dump and yeah, uh, that actually. Was... I, I actually like Otto Porter as a player. I don't think he's a 27, $30 million a year player. No, but no. I do think he's 15 to 20. Like, I think he's a good player. And I mean, he's a good starter. A to, uh, if that hole is getting filled anyway, if you're moving, potentially marking it down, you're moving Griffin up to that four, like like you said, you really need Otto Porter. Yeah, sure, he'd be great off the bench, but I mean. Oh, he'd be fantastic. He, but, and he's, I think that he's a starter on a good team if he's not getting paid 25 plus million. And I mean, he'd but, have a, hey, good on him. He got paid. He got paid. Yeah, but then he'd have a chance in Detroit to just keep getting paid because he'd be one of their main guys. And that's it, right? He would he'd be on the limelight. He, I don't think he'd be pissed off going there. No. Um, Chicago's not – hasn't done very good. Detroit – Hasn't either. <laughs> hasn't had done that good either. Um, that being said, I'd almost think that – I think that the – what they're going to ask for Griffin might be a little too much. Yeah, probably. Um, but we'll get the Drummond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, they'll get that for anything, right? Um, just He just didn't match the style of play, which, again, is they got rid of him because of Griffin, and it's going to be shitty if they get rid of Griffin so fast. Um, I don't think they're going to get rid of Griffin that fast. I do think they're going to get rid of Derek Gross. Um, and someone like Thaddeus Young, salary matches up with with Deros, Tristano Felicio, someone like that, someone who doesn't really matter to the future of the team. Um, and I I think that can be that can be done. I don't know. It's it, I don't think that the four pick. I think that they should trade it. I don't think anyone really stands out at the four pick. And I think that Detroit trade is actually would be okay uh but in that sense they would detroit would probably ask, or chicago would probably ask for a little more than derrick rose but i, I don't think they'd want him because they have chris dunn and they have kobe white and then I just, sometimes plays point guard too there's just i don't think i don't i don't think that chris dunn is a starter on a great playoff team no but i think he was a recent top five pick or six i think so i don't think they're a couple all- years back now he Not started after. in Minnesota. Yeah, but I mean, they trade their pick after one year every year. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, I think he was only 2016, no. 2017, honestly. But he's he's 26 years old. He's going to be yeah. 27 next year. Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean I, not that young. No, but I think they're fine with him as a backup, and they're pretty high in white. And like I said, the bean handles the ball. I just don't think they need or want Rose at this point. But I do think that Griffin deal would be enticing if it's proposed to them. Yeah, yeah, I can I can see that. And like like we were saying that um, that would say that would signal to sh- from Chicago that we don't care about a future first round picks because we have such a big amount of stock right here. Um, Griffin, Levine, Markinen. And Carter is actually a really good. Yeah. That's actually, that's 80 points a game right there. That's what, that's what I mean. And then you at least, like I said, they already have a backup point guard they believe in. If somehow they don't trade out a Porter and Adelia Porter, if they do, I mean, you can still bring in guys to fill out the rest of the team. They'll be fine if they do that. So, I, so what about something like uh, Tadius Young and Sadoransky? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's role players for them. It helps them fill it out. So, I mean, it's no complaints. I mean, it's, it's salary filler. Um, yeah. Just because they're they're going for that, they'd be going for that pick. Uh, and then they'd be going for at least one or two future picks. And after, like, are they really, do they, are they going to compete this year? Even if they keep Griffin? Are they going to compete? I don't know. If they do, at most, you get a first round, not even, you don't get a win out of it. You just make the first round. So. And then you get smoked by the Raptors. Or someone along those. You get smoked by someone. They're seven or eight seed at best. Believe it or not. They thought Toronto would be seven or eight seed last year. <laughs> imagine, imagine that. <laughs> so if you're so you're pretty high that they're actually going to trade this pick. I like I said. I think they're forced to keep it. Probably pick Toppin. If I had that Griffin trade, I would take it. I just don't think it'll be there. 
I think if there if a trade pops up for someone that changes their mind or changes the the direction of the team, then they take it. But like like I say, someone like Griff, Griffin would be fantastic. Um, even someone like Aaron Gordon, uh, which and but because just because it wouldn't cost as much draft capital afterwards. Um, but other than that, I don't see they're probably going to keep it they like to play it safe that's what they've been doing for the last yeah. however many years um but i think they should if that opportunity is there with whoever it is as long as it's like a top 50 player just <laughs> go for it because these this top this four to ten pick isn't going to get you a top 50 player in the next two years. um it might get you one in four or five years we don't know there's always some kind of diamonds in the rough but these guys aren't anyone who's going to help a team win next year. So just on that quickly then, so going to five, you, same thing, I guess. Like, obviously, if you're Cleveland, yeah, someone offers you something for the pick, of course, do what you can. Well, yeah. come up. Again, same thing. I think less and less likely as you move down that board. And if you're Cleveland, you think you're probably having to keep that pick, or do you even think there's going to be something available? I think they're going to have to keep it. See, it's tough because all the people, uh, unless we're talking about Hallie Burton, uh, most of the projected top five in most boards, or even top six or seven, are power forward centers. Yeah. Um, I don't, still don't know what Cleveland is doing, but <laughs> they seem to like the people they have. They like Sexton. <laughs> um, I, mean, I mean, like in their in their bigs, like yeah. they have between Love. Drummond's still there for another year, I believe. Yeah. Uh, hell, I've even heard talks about them, like read rumors about them trying to keep Thompson. I mean, it's just fucking ridiculous. What? They picked him four overall. They gave him that huge con. They've always loved him. <laughs> right? Like, oh, I, great player. Girl, Canadian boy. He must. Uh, the top, top like, pick so- at the time. He must, like, Gilbert must go to the club with him and get laid with him by him or something. Because there's no way a guy with his little production is loved like, that much by a team so bad. <laughs> but, like, they, they, they didn't trade him away last year. So they, they, they never do. <laughs> they accepted that, like, we're probably going to bring him back. Um, <laughs> let's just keep it. And uh, we're still going to pay you 10 to $15 million. You're pro- You might not even start anymore. But uh, don't worry. We got you. Yeah. It's just like they love them some TT for sure. <laughs> but like that's that's the issue I see with them with these players because if Toppin doesn't go forward, they're probably picking Toppin. Um, I personally think that Onyeka is probably going to go four, and then Toppin's going to go five, or vice versa. I think that those are the two guys that'll be the four or five pick. I, there's also Patrick Williams who seems solid. Um, or if they need, or if a team wants a point guard, then I think the first one would probably probably be someone like the Halliburton. But uh, it's again, if they can trade away, they probably do. But why would they trade away? Who's gonna take it? That's I don't think at this who point wants, does. I like who's who wants it? Who they who do they have at the three right now? In Cleveland. Who do they have at the three? That's. Like, I say they're probably most likely to take Denny if he check. If not, it'd be someone else. Like, they do take, they do tend to reach. So I wouldn't be surprised if they even reach. They take a guy like Okoro, who is not unlikely. He's known as one of the best scorers in the draft. They obviously need as much scoring as they could get. I think Okoro will probably fall a bit more than five. But if I'm Cleveland, it's honestly probably between Okoro or Denny. Yeah. Um, I can I can see that. Uh, Oko- Okoro, you're you're pretty high on Okoro, eh? Thinking he's going number eight, and you're thinking he's going number five. He's like there there wasn't much, right? He's one of the only guys who actually proved that he could score at one of the top schools. He did it most of the year, so I mean, yeah, I can. And that's that's the issue about this draft, though, right? There is five, seven, eight, nine, ten are any of these guys going to be a difference maker this year? Well, I mean, even Danny, he played in Israel. I mean. (laughs) 
Well, that's pretty good ball out there. Come on now. Yeah, but still, I mean, it's it's hard, right? Like, there's even a guy, like, a few years ago, like, Jan Beasley for Washington. It's the same thing. Like, all these guys who play overseas and you have them at that 5 to 10, yeah, sure, they might be your KP, but they could also be just a complete dud and just going to put up four points per game. Like, it's happening. It could be dodge check. Yeah, they, they could be a lot Thanks. of things. But, I mean, any player could be, but it's just, I mean, when, like you said, there's so little to go off of, I feel like, in this draft, if there was a real top five, the real top five are probably all Americans. But because there wasn't that tournament, you have to start considering the outside. And Cleveland, like I said, they jump. So they'll probably either reach and take Denny or Oporo. That's my guess. See, that's, when we talk about this draft not being as high as previous draft, it just takes me back to Don Chick's draft year where a team traded down to three and got Doncic, who nobody, people weren't that high on him. People are, now someone like Denny is, could be a top five pick this year. And Doncic was literally EuroLeague MVP. Uh, He was literally the best player not in the NBA. This Denny guy is not even the best player in Israel. (laughs) Um, he's, he's, He's good. He gets... I, he gets 12, 10 to 12 points per game. Um, he's good. But, like, it just shows the difference of caliber between this year and what you could normally get in a different year. For sure. Um, it could, and that could be because we didn't see more of the year play out. Maybe we did see that stuff in the final four, lighting it up for 35 points, hitting a buzzer beater, and playing hard defense. And that's what, um, they, like, the, the scouts, they always try to look beyond scoring. And if you look at all the top scores and all projected drafts, they're all projected to go pretty low, honestly, compared to what they should, if you were to look at it. But, I mean, like you said, they didn't have the opportunity to actually go in there to have big games and big moments. It was just, like, before any of the big games happened, it was over. So, And that's it. Nobody played more than 30 games. Yeah. Um, so we've what, been sitting here for six months, not – Watching a lot of their old basketball, and that's about it. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty firm they have to keep that pick. They take a three. Is that – what's your final? For Cleveland? Yeah. I think they take the pick. It's a high pick. Um, uh, I do think that by the trade deadline, they're looking to offload love. Um, but not a lot of te- – a lot of teams they are looking to not take on salary pass next year. Yeah. I think there's going to be a couple teams that are going to surprise you and be like, hey, we're not getting that star player anyways. Let's go out and make our own team. Um, but I I think that they go for someone who plays power forward center, something that they can take the underloved wing for half a season, three quarters of a season, maybe one full year because Love's on like three more to year contract. Um, but uh, I think that that's the move that they should go with. And there's, they had a pretty good squad there in Cleveland. I don't mind them. Uh, when you're asking earlier who they had over at small forward, they got um, C.D. Osman and Kevin, well, mostly Kevin Porter Jr., depending where you slot him in as. Yeah, so, I mean, they could, they, they have a point. They we'll could, <laughs> yeah, uh, they definitely, there's definitely an opening there. Uh, <laughs> Porter Jr. had a great year last year, but he's not really big enough to be defending a LeBron James at small forward. Yeah. Um, and CD was great when LeBron was there, I guess. Like, okay. uh, they always had, they always smiled together, but uh, <laughs> he's not exactly a stud. No, he's I... good. He's a great player. He's a really hard-nosed player, and I love him on my team. Um, but he's not your star, right? No, I think it's, it's a good assessment. Like, I'm pretty fair, too. If Toppin does follow, he's a good fit there. Like you said, take that four, but I think you'll probably be taken, probably force take that. But anyways, uh, you have a uh, bust or steal from the draft, or is it too hard to gauge for you? It's difficult. Um, as much as there is a lot of different players that will make some noise this year, um, with such a small training camp, no one – really outside of the top 10 barely anyone's going to play 
Yeah, for sure. Like, if there's, we're doing the draft today, and then they start in a month. Pretty much. There's no month yelling. Month. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, n- most of these players are not even going to be playing on their team. Um, I think that the real steals of this draft will be the, the better systems. Um, some, someone like the Raptors, Boston. Uh, I, I think whoever – actually, talking about the Raptors. I think probably whoever the Raptors takes them is steal. I think they've shown a great – outside of Bruno, they've shown a great caliber for drafting late in the, late in the first round. Um, and they have a void right now, a couple voids right now. I don't know who they're gonna who they're aiming towards because this draft is so odd that we don't know who's gonna still be left at that point. Uh, um, there could be a lot of people that we think are gonna go top fifteen that are gonna start to drop. Um, but I think someone like that team, who Terrence Davis probably not playing this year. Yeah, I was gonna um, mention that too. Yeah. So there's there's a void at almost every single position on that team. Yep. And whoever the best player available is at that time, I think they slot him in, and he actually gets some playing time on a contending team. That's fair. Yeah. And and that would be the steal of the draft. That's um, fair. that's that's what I'd be going with. I don't know what player it's going to be, but I think that their their system is going to put someone in place, and they're going to be forced to play this person. And in a short season, with their older players, these players are actually going to play a few minutes per game, and they're going to show out by the into the season that they're actually going to be playing and playoff minutes and what where if, nobody else after the 15 is going to play any playoff minute at all. And what about a bust looking through real quick? Do you think that anyone in that top 10, it's, I guess even top five, because like you said, outside yeah. of that, it's just unpredictable. Do you think anyone outside of that is just going to not even be starting caliber? Or do you think at least that top five, they're going to hold pretty consistent? Again, it depends who makes it into the top five, right? Um, because we don't, it's see someone like um, you have you're talking. You're talking about Okoro. If he makes it up there, who knows if he gets shut down and gets a little gun shy uh, in in the NBA. Um, but it's it's a tough bet. I'm gonna stick with someone in the top three. And I hate to say it, but I think just because on where he's probably gonna end up. Edwards is going to be considered a bust at the number three, um, which is funny because he, he would on a lot of people's boards, he's going number one. He was number one most of the year. Wiseman only played three games this year. So he very well could be the bust because we don't, we just physically have seen him. He seems like he's a pretty fairly imposing presence and he's impressed everyone at, uh, he's impressed everyone at the camps so far. So I think that he'll still hold up because he'll, he'll fit in a, a little bit better. I think Edwards will likely go to a team where he's not going to be a top three player or he's just going to be another young role player and he'll be great role player overall. I think he'll turn into a great player, but he won't be considered a, he'll be considered a bust for the first couple of years of his career because he was picked so high. Interesting take. Definitely the first time I think I've heard it. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not, like I could definitely see where you only kind of max out at like that 10, maybe 12, 13 points per game for first few years of his career. People are kind of just tailing on him almost like a De'Aaron Fox until last year kind of thing. Or even Oladipo. Yeah. Uh, he had a rough first going. Sure. Uh, he, hell, he could even be a Paul George where it takes him three years, but then he turns out he's a freaking stud on the team. Um, if you don't, if you remember Paul George wasn't, he was a great player and he's a good player in his first year, but, what one? What most of the second year? Uh, he was only drafted in I think the twenties, though. I think twenty second. Or... Oh, I guess yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, no, it's there's that's that's why I was saying more like um, fuck's the name there. Uh, I can't even think about it. That's what happens when you smoke something. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, it's I. It's hard hard to say. It's this draft is unpredictable. Yeah, I mean, for a bus, like, it, it's hard. Like, uh, I consider, like I said, Minnesota, if they have to take ball, it won't be a good fit. So I think at first it'll kind of be in a similar situation where it might overall, people might kind of twine on him, but he'll probably overall a good player. I don't really know anyone off the top of my head that stands out for a steal. 
probably the consensus that I think most people are going with and I'd go into is probably RJ Hampton. He lost a lot of his value playing in New Zealand. He didn't like internationally in both in the league. He didn't have too great of a year. And I mean, shooting wise, his numbers are That's a Canadian boy, right? I believe so. Yeah. And, uh, he was, he was really high a couple of years ago. Like he's the only player in the draft who both 2018 and 2019 was on the U S weekly, I believe ASU top 10 or all American kind of thing. And he was in, in the guard position for both. Um, oh, he's American. But I, I think RJ Barrett, that's why. But, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Woo, but, over my head. Sorry about that. Him. But, uh, like the thing, like I said, like if you look at his stats in New Zealand, not too great. He, he was, I believe playing with men and I believe he, somehow he played on the international team in New Zealand too. Um, but either way, like I said, obviously the talent's there. The guy can cut the net. The guy's the athleticism. Doesn't necessarily have the scoring ability, but for a team, I think that needs a point guard. I think he could definitely at least be a starting point guard in this year. And I think a team will probably get him somewhere between 15 and 23. So, I mean, to at least have a starter from that position, I think he took That's pretty solid, especially in this draft. So I yeah he'll probably be at least one of the guys looking back on that we say, okay, that was a solid pick. Yeah, it's, that's a fair thing, fair take. It's hard to say what the caliber of basketball in the NBL, NBL is. Yeah. Um, he's been over in the New, the New Zealand League. Um, so it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to put his numbers in context uh, when it comes to the NBA. But again, he's big enough. He's tall enough. He's got he got the size. Yeah, I can. And he was projected to be much higher originally. Um, he's been around for a while now in the limelight. And I believe uh, he was named the uh, Texas high school player um, in 20, I think it was 17 or 18. And the only guys before him um, who won that award was Justice Winslow, Marcus Smart, and another NBA player. And then it was him. 2019. The, yeah, and then it was him the following year. So, I mean, the guys clearly coming out of those systems are productive in the NBA. So, I don't think it's unrealistic to think he's going to be a starter. He probably will at the end of his life, during his NBA career. Yeah, like he's been playing for the, like the U16 team, the U17 team, the U18 team. Exactly. He's been essentially the starting point guard on almost all those teams. Yeah. Um, the fact that he's going, dropping so low right now, it's likely just because of the year he had overseas. Yeah, for, that's what, yeah, exactly. Um, and, like, it's, he's got some weaknesses. He's not the best player. He's not going to be, but he's, you're right. He, the fact that he can drop down to one of those lower picks, it's, he'll, he could turn out to being a really good one. That's a good point. I can, well, it's, he's someone that we'll, we'll find out right away because, like you say, that's, if he goes to certain teams, he could likely play quite a bit. Yeah, and I mean, I've even seen talks of him going maybe to Brooklyn at 19. And I mean, when a team like that, where you have that talent, you maybe have a chance to play with Durant, you have a chance to fill Kyrie's void for the 30 games he's going to miss like he does every year. I mean, <laughs> you have a chance for Especially if you trade away the farm. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it's hard, but I mean... With them too, like, yeah, Karis Levert, who knows where he's going to end up. Dinwiddie at the time, yeah, it could be, but who knows if he's going to want. Like, they have a lot of pieces, and I think maybe they just want more bigger names, and Hampton's obviously maybe one of them. So he could definitely go maybe Brooklyn, maybe, but we'll see. Brooklyn, yeah, if he goes there, I can see him backing up Irving. They need a backup. Um, anything being under, I don't know how Steve Nash is as a, as a coach, but I feel like point guards are the position he knows how to coach. I would hope so. <laughs> um, right? Like, he's pretty known. Uh, we all kind of looked up to him as a kid. We all thought we were going to be Steve Nash. He's a short white guy in the NBA from Canada. We're not like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, a fuck. I was pretty sure I was, I was supposed to be him when I was a kid. Um, and then I never grew after 12, and I never got good at basketball. It's seeing the day the burst in the draft every year that breaks the heart. Ah, <laughs> uh, they're in the two thousands now, aren't they? Yeah, like two thousand one. You're like, you're like twelve. What the? <laughs> this is the meat. Come on. <laughs> like I've been practicing, guys. Come on now. Exactly. You see me at the local elementary school. Play JV. Come on. 
Uh, playing at the elementary school kids too, and but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's uh, that Brooklyn team is. I, I, I think they have a great team right now, and I don't think they should trade for anyone. No, probably not. That's what I mean. If they have another chance, at least a good player at nineteen, they know they're getting solid piece. They can still keep Lever. They yep. can still keep Dinwiddie. Keep it all together. Run with it. They'll probably be a five or six in the. Uh, in the East for sure. So, I mean, if Hampton's there at the 19, I can definitely see him taking it. I don't know if he'll be there still at the 19. Um, but I do think a Hampton's going to be a good pick. I agree. He probably I, won't be because everyone's, I think there's going to be a lot, a lot of reachers who actually pick this year just to like, who do we know? You know? <laughs> yep. I, I think Brooklyn trades that pick though at 19. Probably by the time he gets there, he probably won't be there. Probably traded. But they, they have so many options right now. It's, let's, see, let's see what they do because they have a lot of capital, Brooklyn, right? For sure. they, have most, they have most of their picks. They didn't trade. They didn't trade for any of their star players. People no. just signed there. Yeah. Like, what, why can't that happen in Toronto? Um, that never happens anywhere. Taxes. Like, <laughs> New York taxes. Hell, we don't. Nothing, man, have you ever been there? I ordered flight from New York before. I was amazed. <laughs> I paid like four dollars in taxes. My it was like a three hundred dollar order. I was like, what? The so, f- <laughs> whenever we go, we go back to taxes. So I'm gonna put that back into in basketball sense. Um, of course, we both know what the income taxes in Canada. Yeah. Sales tax already is higher for everything you fucking buy. Yeah. But the income tax is outrageous. I think some of these Americans can get away with it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but Talk about Texas. Houston's in Texas, if you didn't know. Yeah. Um, I had a feeling. These, yeah, I imagine that. And these two players that are getting paid $40-plus plus million like the report that came out that Westbrook wants to be traded, fuck no. He wants to win. Yeah. But, like, if they, if, they, if they want to trade Harden, he's going to be pumped. Are you kidding me? He wants to stay in Texas? So does Harden. Yeah. Like, they both want to win, and they know that the winning is probably not going to be there just because how they got smoked against LA um I just don't think that they made the right moves last year but even like like trading Capello that was saying you have no center you have PJ Tucker as your center how do you (laughs) hey they still end up beating me in NBA 2K all the time but I can't play as them (laughs) because I can't even do a pick and roll because Tucker's shorter than a fucking point guard exactly um (laughs) So, like, it's it's hard with that team. I don't think that – I think either one of them would like to stay there. I don't think that they get along as well as they thought they would of. <laughs> um, with that being said, if they don't get what they think that they're going – that these guys are worth, I think they just keep them. Yeah, I mean, that's probably what will happen, I think. Like, unless it's that sharp pick, okay, that's probably what's going to happen. But they already traded Covington. Yep. So, like, the team – it's already unraveling. Yeah. Um, Covington is a great player on the for them. For sure. Um, but uh, it's, they're still going to be a great team. They're still going to be probably a top four team if they keep both those players just because how good they are. Uh, LA is just, they're scared of them now. <laughs> I'd, be and scared it, of Denver, though. I'd be scared of Denver if I was them. I'd be scared Golden of State. State. I'd be scared of the Clippers, the Lakers, maybe like the Mavericks almost once they keep going out. Clippers, that's an interesting team. That'll be a take after. We'll try to get this uploaded. Yep. Get, get our six views. <laughs> oh, oh, that's true. What are we at now? I, I don't know how this thing works. Oh, there we go. I feel like I have Perfect. it. I don't even know. You have it. I don't even know where it uploads at. But so I'm just going to stop. Your computer. It. Does it like automatically? I have no idea. Either your computer or the cloud. Uh, but 